Order of operations is another review topic that isn't algebra yet, but would be very foundational to how they deal with algebra, with how they deal with um, variables, when you introduce variables. Order of operations, and you may have learned, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, it's parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Um, and I, I still see many teachers using that. Um, there are other acronyms that you could use that might be more generalizable. You know, some of the misunderstandings with order of operations come up when you talk about parentheses um, as one of the keys of the acronym, and yet it also applies to brackets and absolute value bars. You have to explain that caveat to students. And also multiplication and division work right, right to left at the same time because multiplication and division are kind of the same operation, really. Um, they're just inverses of each other. It's inverse multiplication is division. And then addition and subtraction also, they're just inverses of each other, but they're really kind of the same thing. So you do them at the same time from right to left. Um, Another misconception is when you have a fraction and the numerator is an expression rather than a, just a number is expression or the denominator is an expression, there are understood parentheses there that aren't drawn in. So there are definitely some misconceptions there, um, but there's not a great way to overcome those. You just have to address them as they come. So you do want to explicate all those things to students in, in the best way that you can. Also, if you have multiple operations, multiple grouping symbols, what would you do? Here you have a couple of choices. You could distribute this negative sign, right? A negative one is here. Or you could work from the inside out, is probably what most students would do. You would start with the innermost set of grouping symbols, which would be this set of parentheses right here. Six plus five is 11. So you would slowly replace and encouraging students to take their time and slowly replace um, each element, each time you do an operation as the first one, then ju just keep everything the same, only replacing that one number. And then taking a step back, analyzing it again, say now I'm going to do what's inside these grouping symbols, the absolute value being grouping symbols. Two minus 11 is negative nine with an absolute value bars and the 17 over here and then taking the absolute value of negative nine. Where is that in the order of operations if you were to use the acronym? That evaluation process is not really in there. Like, with, where would you do that at? But you would just do it next for this example. So there's another um, you know, thing that, the question that would come up. Taking the absolute value of negative nine sort of happens when you evaluate, it would be positive nine. This minus sign is outside the absolute value bar, so it does not go away. And then finally, 17 minus 9 is 8. So it's a slow replacing process, substituting every time. You should connect with equal signs when appropriate. That's usually, with most of these problems, that would be appropriate. That each line is equal to what was on the previous line. That's typically appropriate. What I meant by a fraction being uh, possibly problematic would be something like this. Here's an example where the numerator is an expression and so in the student's mind they might see division as coming before addition with this with this plus sign versus the divided sign. However, that's not the order that you should go in. And I explain this to my students, that when you have a numerator or a denominator, there are understood parentheses around it that kind of keep it hanging together. So that whole numerator is in a parenthetical. You just don't see it, but it's understood to be there. That way you're going to get them to evaluate what's in the numerator and the denominator separately first before trying to divide. 
And in the numerator, I have multiple parentheticals. I have this one, and then I have a set of brackets. Also, see this set of parentheses right here. Students see that and say, oh, I'm supposed to do what's inside that first. How do I do negative 12? So there's another question, you know, how do I do negative 12? Well, this, this set of parentheticals I tell them is just for looks. Like, you don't have to write it, but the textbooks do. So they'll probably be, be well-versed with their textbooks, but just in case, you know. This negative 12 divided by 4 is negative 3. And everything else is still there. Then 5 plus a negative 3 is positive 2. So the final answer is 2 thirds.